In this video, I'm going to refactor an existing c -sharp razor page project to run a bit more efficiently by using asynchronous methods. Now, this is important because it allows us to make the most out of our compute. So, if we see a, a traditional serial approach, each task has to wait for the prior task to complete before it can run, but there are cycles there where the computer can be doing things while it's waiting. On the other hand, async and await makes it easy to do this. We can have one process kick off two longer running processes. Those longer running processes will effectively run in their own thread, and when they're finished, it sends a notification back that it's finished, and then the original process can continue. So async means I want to fire these in their own lane, which is what we see down here, what I've called the I.O. lane. And then await means I'm going to wait until I hear back from those processes before I continue. And this is really important when you might have something that requires data from these processes before it can continue. But on the other hand, you want to request the data early on while you're doing other things so that a synchronous call can fire off. You can wait for the data. And then when it comes back, you can continue and process whatever you need to process. This is common when we're calling APIs or pretty much any network resource where just the network latency is going to cause a bit of a delay where our computer can do other things while it's waiting. I'm going to do this two ways. Number one, I'm going to launch an asynchronous method from asynchronous or normal method. And secondly, I'm going to run two asynchronous methods relatively simultaneously. What they're doing is they're going out to fetch some data over the internet. So I want to spawn these two tasks, let them run, and then wait for them at different times. It's a little tricky, but not a lot of syntax, actually. So let's jump right in. First, we look at our existing program. And we'll notice that it is getting specimen data on line number 40 by saying client.getAsync and then task.result. Now, this one we're going to need relatively soon. Uh, so the idea here is that when we spawn the task with client.getAsync, it starts to download the data that it needs off that JSON feed. And then when we have the await, or in this case, task.result, that's saying wait until we've downloaded the data before we move to the next step. Now, for this first round, we actually need that data pretty quickly uh, because we'll see that this result is used right here on line 43. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that one as it is. Let's wait for that one to complete. But the one I can make a little bit more efficient is this line 63, this plan task. You see, we're waiting until we get to line 63 before we invoke this async method to say, go get my plant data. But what if we could move that a little bit earlier in our source code and say, okay, start getting the plant data now. Go ahead and get it while you're doing other things. Do it asynchronously. And then I'll put a wait statement when I'm ready to use it. So effectively, it's kind of preloading. So I'm going to take this, move it up towards the top right after my other uh, task here. As a matter of fact, you know, I could put it, actually I could put it right before that task. Now down below where I did have plant task dot result, I can change this just subtly to await plant task. And what that's telling us is, okay, yeah, we'll start fetching the data up here. We'll allow it to keep fetching. If we get to line 65 and it's finished fetching, okay, go ahead, go to the next line. If we've gotten line 65 and it has not finished that process, we're simply going to wait for that process to finish before we move to the next line. So good rule of thumb here is, what are we doing with the data that we get back from the service? We're storing it into plant result. Okay, how soon do we need plant result? Where's the very first time we're going to need it? Here on line 66. That's where we want to put the await. So essentially, we put all the tasks towards the top of the method. We could even put them all the way at the top if we want. And that will start the task. And then we put the await right before the point where we need the data. And that's how we can fire off these simultaneous calls, do other work, and then uh, when we hear back from them, we can take action to continue processing. Uh, kind of like, you know, making breakfast at the same time or making lunch at the same time where uh, maybe you have the burgers going on the grill while that's doing your, your butter and the buns and things like that. And so, you know, naturally we tend to be asynchronous people and we tend to you know, let the dishwasher go on as we're doing laundry, that kind of stuff. That's effectively what's going on here. But we do have one issue, and this is a little bit of a tricky one. 
Notice as soon as I say await, it says, it gives me an error and it tells me that uh, make method async, the await operator can only be used within an async method. Consider making this method async uh, modifier and changing its return type, so on and so forth. What that's saying is that if we have asynchronous methods going on here, we have to let anyone who calls us know about that. And we do that by adding async to the method signature. But uh, uh, there's actually a bit more that we need to do that's a little bit of syntax. It's a little bit tricky. Let's go ahead and do it. So first of all, we need to return, we need to change the return type. Uh, we need to change it from list specimen to task. We need to wrap it in a task. And now we can say await. So private await task, uh, just like we have here. Uh, the next part gets, oops, sorry, they say. The next part gets a little bit tricky because we have to wrap all of this together and I guess what I would call a lambda, just a really big lambda. So I'm just going to paste this one in because it's a bit of a syntax here. So we see we have to return a task. So we have to add this line up at the top, return await, task run, open paren, async, open close paren, equal sign, greater than, open curly. Okay, well, an open curly has to be balanced. So I'm going to take all of the stuff that we have here. And I'm simply going to indent it. And then I'm going to add my close curly. This one gets especially tricky because close curly is not good enough. Let's scroll up and see what happened at the top. You see, here's our open curly, but we also have an open paren, which would indicate a method call. So after that close curly we just added, we have to add close, uh, close paren and then a semicolon. And now this function looks good but we also have to change the way that it's invoked. So what do I mean by that? We were calling from one synchronous function to another, which means do these steps, wait for them to complete, tell me when you're done. Now we're going from a synchronous function to an asynchronous function. An asynchronous function can call other asynchronous functions, which is what we're doing when we load these, these pieces of data. So we have to take one more step when we go from synchronous to asynchronous, because it has to know, okay, I'm all done, I've gotten the result back. So for that, I'm going to change this return type from var, var result to var task. Because it's a var, you know, the data type doesn't change, but let's give it a name that's more appropriate. Then I'm going to say task.result, which means go ahead and run this to a completion and give me the result. Now I can save that to a variable. And notice when it auto-completed, notice the type it used. It said, oh, okay, task.result returns a list of specimens. Well, that's convenient because take a look at our method signature here. Our task has a generic identifier to tell it to return a list of specimens. And then if we take a look at the bottom of this whole thing that's running asynchronously, it's returning water-loving specimens, which is a list of specimens. So sure enough, all the dots connect. We're getting back a list of specimens. And then we can simply send that off to our page, our, our HTML page. So a couple of changes here because we have to start the task and then we have to wait for the result. Within the method itself, we have to add the async modifier. We have to take the return type and wrap it in a task. And then we have to wrap all of the logic in this return await, blah, 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 all the way down to the close curly, close paren, uh, semicolon. And with all that, uh, let's take a look at this two times. First, I'm just gonna run it. Uh, then I'm going to step through the debugger and we can actually watch as this works. Straight up run, we see that we get just the water-loving specimens at the Cincinnati Zoo. Now let me snap a few breakpoints in here. And we'll try again. No surprise, the onGet method gets called first. Now notice I put a breakpoint on every command here in the onGet method, and that's important because we want to watch the sequence of events here. So I'll, I'll start by choosing F11, which means step into. And notice where we are. It's in here running our, uh, running our get, get plant data method. So I'll choose F5 if we're happy with that. And we notice that now it's stepping through one line at a time. And uh, OK, it's, uh, it, uh, oh, oh, sorry, the two breakpoints that just hit here. Notice we have the one that's getting the plant data, making an internet connection to do that. And the second one's getting the specimen data, 
the specimen data we have to use immediately, the plant data we'll use in just a few more moments. So, um, and by the way, while this is going, I do want to show that the page is still waiting for me. So it's important to note that the page calls our uh, on get method, and on get is the one with the three breakpoints here. And now we're working through this get uh, get data method, and uh, we're stepping through this, but the on get method can't proceed until it hears back from get data. So I choose F10. This we've seen before, so I'll go through this a little bit quickly. Little delay there, incidentally, as it uh, went out to fetch the data, which is why asynchronous calls are so important. So validating the JSON schema, no surprise here. And now take a look where we are. Now we've received the specimens. Now we need to wait for the plant data. So uh, more than likely, especially with all my talking, it's already downloaded the data. So it's not going to have to wait here. But if it were a long running process, we would see the debugger, whatever the source code, the program would stop here and wait until it hears back from that asynchronous task. So I choose F10 and now it's starting to read that plant data. Once again, page is still not loaded. It's still waiting for my response. So I keep going with F10, F10, F10. I'll go ahead and choose an F5 at this point to tell it to continue. We notice that now this get data function is wrapping up, so I'll choose F5 and watch carefully where the breakpoint goes next. The breakpoint next goes all the way back to on get, and let's take a look at what's in result. About 20 plants, that feels about right. Actually, I probably ought to put those names in the results as well, but nonetheless, you see that sure enough, it is waiting for my result before it renders the page. I press F5 now, and the hourglass stops on the page, and the page has rendered. So in this video, we've seen how to do a couple things that can be a little bit tricky. First of all, separate the task and the await, or the task and the result, the task and the wait, however you're doing it, so that we can go ahead and get the task started first, but then wait for it to complete before we need the code. Frankly, I think that's the easy part. The tougher part is going from the synchronous on get method to the asynchronous get data method, which can then do further asynchronous calls. And that's where we had to define the task as a return type. We had to do that big lambda to get everything to work together. I'll confess, it took me several internet searches to find how to do this. And I was really happy when I got it all working, which is why I wanted to share it. So I hope this video is helpful. And I hope it helps you to solve the same problem that I was trying to solve just two days ago. As always, I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.